So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology, OnePlus 9 Pro 5G full review. Now this is the morning mist color right here. It does come in pine green, 969 to start for the 128 gig model. You can get it at 1069 for 256 gig, 12 gig of RAM. That's what we have here. Now inside of this phone is a Snapdragon 888 five nanometer CPU. That's the latest and greatest CPU in the market. 4,500 milliamp hour battery in here. This thing does have a quad camera system. They did combine with Hasselblad to make really good color science on here. And this is just the beginning. I can't wait to see where the partnership goes next. We do have a 48 megapixel main sensor, a 50 megapixel ultra wide for the sharpest ultra wide photos I might have ever seen, an eight megapixel telephoto and a two megapixel depth sensor. Now on the front here, you do have yourself a 6.7 inch LTPO OLED display. This thing does range from one hertz to 120 hertz. So it is a 120 hertz display, but it's a smart refresh. It does have capabilities up to 1 billion colors. So this is one of the best Android displays on the market in terms of overall, you know, customization, how much you can tweak with the display. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. They do ship this phone with Oxygen OS 11 and Android 11 combined for what is a very slick and smooth software experience. So those are basically the key specs that matter here with the OnePlus 9 Pro 5G. All right, guys, so in this review, I'm gonna talk about my pros and cons throughout this. Basically, what I found to be pros and what I found to not be so great about this phone. So I'll begin with the first favorite of this one, and it's gotta be the display. The display is a new LTPO display, or it's a low temperature polycrystalline oxide. Essentially, it does have an adaptive refresh rate to make the battery life a little bit better on these 120 hertz displays. You'll see it is a smart refresh with a dynamic frame rate. So what that means is that sometimes it won't be, a lot of times it won't be in the 120 hertz to save you on the battery life. You could also alternatively go to the 60 hertz, but I don't know why you would do that. Then you do have natural screen calibrations and vivid, but you also do have these advanced ones, which is why I really like this display. You have AMOLED wide gamut, sRGB, and P3. In addition to that, there is a vision comfort mode up here in the quick settings you'll see right here that really do tweak out kind of how this phone really looks at night. You can take the saturation way down, you could bring it way up, bring it down. And this is really good on the eyes for those of you who just find screens sometimes to be glaring too much in your face. There's a lot of tweaking that you could do with this display. And I really do appreciate these little small tweaks that just make it a more enjoyable experience to use. In addition, this display does have hyper touch, which can improve the gaming experience. And there'll be less flicker in some scenes and a little bit better performance in gaming on the display. You also have a vibrant color effect a motion graphic smoothing and ultra high video resolution. But really what I gotta say is that having such a sharp resolution, really good accurate color, means that when you're reading articles or you're going through you know, YouTube videos, everything kinda just looks really nice no matter what you're doing and it really does give off that flagship feel for this phone. So let's go ahead and watch a video. You can pinch in, you can see the punch hole over there. Now I still miss the all screen, but I don't really like the pop-up mechanism of the OnePlus 7 Pro because I think it might not be great over time, but I still do miss that. But there is a punch hole. Overall, it's still a pretty much all-screen display here. So you got a minimal bezel right here, very minimal bezel up here, very sleek. So the display, very good. Now it is a little bit tall and narrow due to its aspect ratio. So if you like a wider display, this one might not be the best. But I gotta say, it's got a comfortable feel because of its aspect ratio. So overall, very strong. It's my first pro, the display. Super smooth, super fast, amazing with gaming, amazing with videos, just really love it. All right guys, so talking about the cameras, this feels more like a dual camera setup with an extra two just to make it a quad. And what I mean by that? Well, it means that the main camera and the ultra wide are what feel like the premium cameras here. The ultra wide is one of the sharpest I've seen on the market, and then the main one, with that 48 megapixel IMX sensor. They're both IMX sensors on the ultra wide and the main camera just seem really great. Um, overall, I like the different modes you have in here like portrait, nightscape, pro mode, tilt shift. Tilt shift kind of can miniaturize things in the background. It's a cool, neat feature. 
But I do like that this phone does 8K video at 30. I know not everybody's gonna use it, but it's just a kind of a neat thing because it's actually decently usable. Some phones are really shaky in 8K video, and then this one is kind of usable. 4K up to 120 FPS, I haven't seen that on many phones, and definitely could shoot in the 21 by nine aspect ratio, or you can shoot in the 16 by nine aspect ratio. So a lot of people are watching videos in the longer format, so you could shoot in that format here. Now, if we go to settings, you'll see there's plenty going on in here, but my overall thoughts on this camera are that it shoots very sharp, very natural looking photos, and I do think it's the first time I could say a OnePlus phone definitely plays at the flagship level with some of the other beasts in the game. Now, I will say on the front camera, I'm a little disappointed that it gets a little bit too close to your face. I would like it to back out just a little bit wider for doing things like vlogs, especially in video. You can see it just came really close in on me here and this front camera cannot do 4k on the front so i would like to see 4k video on future iterations on the front of this but overall you do have yourself a very versatile camera setup but i'm just going to stop talking i took tons of photos and video samples of this phone take a look in, at them and let me know what you think is this the phone you want to pick up with the partnership with hasselblad on the oneplus 9 pro
All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and test this super stable mode for the OnePlus 9 Pro. Kind of see how it does perform when in movement. Now we're gonna take it around, turn it around and bring it back down. All right, so here we go again. So this is the video, I'm on a scooter, but this is the video without the super stable mode on. So this is just a regular OnePlus 9 Pro 5G video here. Here's some nighttime video with the OnePlus 9 Pro 5G. Okay, so my next thing I noticed is just the slick and smooth performance with Oxygen OS here and Android 11 combined with that Snapdragon 888. No matter what you're doing on this phone, this is gonna feel like one of the fastest, smoothest, slickest Android phones you've ever used on the market. So really do appreciate that. And that brings me on to my next pro, which has to be the gaming experience on here. The gaming on here is just really fun because when you are doing gaming on this phone, it does have some of the better performance and it stays pretty cool. Even though this phone is super thin, they did improve the cooling on this phone. So definitely nice here that you could play games while it not getting too warm. I have found that it will get a little warm, but never uncomfortably so, which is pretty incredible considering how thin this phone is. Usually gaming phones are a little bit thicker to provide some better cooling, but this one gives you that sleek feel, that sleek body, and it doesn't really get too hot in gaming. So really do appreciate this about the OnePlus series device here, this OnePlus 9 Pro. Pro 5 is the Oxygen OS software. This skin is just almost like a stock skin with just a few customizations and tweaks that make this phone experience just better. So let's go to customization and you'll see what I'm talking about. So you can change the accent colors. Very nice for customization to basically whatever you want. And then it'll tweak out the status bar. Some of these customizations are similar to what people would have put on rooted Android phones back in the day. You'll see we do have different system icons like square, teardrop, round rectangle, depending on what you want. You can even switch from oxygen to hydrogen icons if you want more of a square icon. We can go to the different fonts. I actually use the OnePlus Sans font because I think it looks cleaner than the Roboto, but you have Roboto or OnePlus Sans right there. If we go over here, you have different fingerprint animations down here, very nice. If we go over here, you can change the different type of color of the horizon light when you get notifications on the lock screen, very clean there. And then you have different clocks on the ambient display right here, so different types of clock styles. And then if you go back and you go back to the settings, you'll see it looks pretty stock here. It doesn't look overly packed with features. And if you go to battery, you'll see right here, just a very clean experience on this Oxygen OS. So I really do like the polish of it. It just, one of more, the more mature looking Android skins, it doesn't look cartoony. It looks like very, it looks very mature and very grown up. I really do like that. It doesn't look like a toy or anything like that. Really appreciate that. Now you can see, over here, we do have reverse wireless charging in this software as well, pretty neat. And then we have the Zen mode, which is awesome for helping you to get a little bit more focus in your life. When you start this, you cannot get into your phone. So if you want a way to focus, you don't have to download a focus timer or anything like that. You can just use their Zen mode and you can go different minutes that you wanna be focused. So this can be very useful if you're doing time blocking techniques and stuff like that to help achieve better focus. So I really do like this mode as well. The Oxygen OS software, definitely a major pro for this phone for me. Pro number six, and this pro seems like a marketing thing to get you to buy this phone, but really in real life, this is an actual game changer. So the Warp Charge 65, I wish most phones could charge like this. OnePlus designed this battery to not overheat when doing such charging like this, and you can literally charge this thing from one to 100% in 29 minutes. 
it's insanity. If you're at like 50% and you throw this on charge, I did this yesterday, 12 minutes went by, I was at 97%. I couldn't believe it. It's just insane. When you put it on this charger, this thing just makes this thing fly to 100. So if you are worried about battery life, worry not because the charger they include is insanely quick on this phone. So very, very big thumbs up there. I wish most manufacturers would include something like this. Even if they charge it as a separate option, it's still an amazing piece of hardware. And the fact that this is included in the box is pretty good value because you could easily charge 50, 60 bucks and certain people would buy a charger like that. This can also charge your other devices like your tablets and other things that don't require more than say 65 watts. So very good. And another pro is that you can do 50 wireless, 50 watt wireless charging through the warp wireless charger 50. You can pick that up as well, oneplus.com. So my next pro of the OnePlus 9 Pro is gotta be the comfortable size for this design. Now, this phone does weigh right around 197 grams. So it's actually lighter than the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the Galaxy S21 Ultra, it's direct competitors, and it does feel you know, quite a bit more comfortable in terms of the width. So this phone just has a more comfortable, I, I just think it's an easier to use one-handed phone, especially when you're talking about a bigger device. It's not a one-handed phone for most people, but if you are gonna try to manage this thing with one hand, this phone right here definitely is one of the more comfortable for a 6.7 inch screen. And it mostly comes down to that curved back here on the rear, also not being super, super wide. Uh, it just gives it a nice, and not being super, super heavy at 197 grams, it just gives it a comfortable feel for the size. So this is an area not many people are talking about, but the OnePlus 9 Pro does have a more comfortable for this size feel than I've seen on other 6.7 inch phones. And to confirm, that's a 20 by nine aspect ratio, which always makes for a taller, more narrow experience. And so those are all of my pros with this phone, all of the main pros. I mean, we could say the silent switch. Most Android phones don't have that. OnePlus has had this on all of their phones though. So definitely nothing new here for OnePlus. It's still a nice little neat pro here for this phone. So my first con is not really a con of the whole series. It's just this particular color. Picks up too much fingerprints. Get the pine green if you want a more clean back on this phone. I just noticed that about this particular phone. The next one is the battery life. 4,500 milliamp hour battery. The competing Samsung device does have a 5,000. I hope OnePlus goes up in size on their next phone here. This one just doesn't really have super strong battery life. Throughout the day, it will make it, but by the end of the day, you're always charging. You're always in the 20s, 30s. If you're a heavy user, you might be in the teens or a little bit below 10. Yes, that is fixed by this super fast charging, so I'm not really mad at them here. This is really okay because of that, but I will say it's not the best battery life I've seen. But there is a cool feature that you can do under the utility section where you can schedule this thing to power off and on. So at nighttime, you're not draining any battery. I have it set to turn off at 3 a.m. and to turn back on at 9 a.m. And I do switch that depending on when I'm going to sleep that day. So definitely it does have a nice little feature there. Con three, the fingerprint placement of this phone, the optical one is too low. So if you're using this thing one hand, you just naturally want to put your thumb here because that's just where your thumb is kind of at. You have to kind of reach down a little bit and over time you might miss it just because it's just, it doesn't feel natural to kind of like bring your thumb down here on a bigger phone like this. It's okay on a smaller phone, but on this phone, it's just not a natural feel. So in the future, OnePlus, pre please bring this fingerprint up a little bit higher. That would be appreciated for the next series of phones. Front facing video, we talked about a little bit earlier, just a little bit too close. It has a pretty sharp look, but I like to see them back this thing out a little more in the next, maybe in a software update, maybe they could back it out or in the next iteration of this phone when it does get upgraded. My next con is this has Gorilla Glass 5. So I wish this thing had Gorilla Glass Victus. It would make it more worthy of its price, but it doesn't. So I would like to see having the best Gorilla Glass on here. It does have an IP rating, that's nice. And some of the things that are just okay on this phone. So I'm doing a pros, cons, and an okay section. The speakers. Cameras ever on a OnePlus. So what more, what more could you ask for in 2021 right now from your standard slab. They sound very clear, very good, but they're not the loudest I've heard on a phone. Smartphone and taking a look at these. But overall, I don't think they're gonna disappoint too many people. They're just okay. Pretty good speakers, they're okay. Now, the next one is 5G. 
The 5G performance on here also just okay. It could depend on your network, but I haven't seen it be the fastest 5G I've ever seen. And that could just be, be where I'm at in the network I'm on. But definitely this is an area where you wanna, let me know what you guys have been experiencing. Have you been experiencing the fastest 5G? I still feel like 5G isn't everywhere yet. So we'll have to see if that improves in the future. And the next thing that's definitely just okay is software updates. A guaranteed two years, but we don't know if we're gonna get three to five on this thing. Hopefully we can start getting more software updates. So overall, in conclusion, I really like this phone. I'm not sure why people keep saying the price is too high. This definitely feels worth its price. This is not a cheap looking or feeling OnePlus phone. They're putting premium cameras on here, a top dog 120 Hertz fluid AMOLED display, very fast charging, faster than both competitors in the industry, very slick and smooth software, fastest CPU in the industry. I don't see why they shouldn't be able to charge similar price to what other competing brands are charging. In addition, let's stop forgetting that OnePlus is a much more diverse company now. They do have the Nord line, they do have the 8T still available, so if you're looking for that flagship killer, you don't gotta buy their flagship. They do have other options in the lineup. The OnePlus 9R is even gonna be coming to certain regions. So definitely, this is not the only one available. You also got the OnePlus 9 to $300 cheaper than this phone. So, and basically 90% of what this phone is, we'll be reviewing this one soon, so stay subscribed. So the real question though is why would you buy the OnePlus 9 Pro? Well, you're coming from an older OnePlus, you love the OnePlus device, that's gonna be a definitely easy recommend. However, if you're coming from other manufacturers, the reason why is you want something different that's also polished, also smooth, also has great cameras. It's overall just a great phone. There's just not much else to say about it. It's got clean and simple branding. It's got clean, simple software. It's got clean, simple cameras. They're not the overly complex to use. They're pretty easy to use. It's just an overall great phone with fast charging and sleek build, sleek design. There's not much more else to say. Now, if that's worth a thousand bucks to you, you'll have to make that decision for yourself. But this was my review of the OnePlus 9 Pro 5G, and I definitely could recommend it if you're looking for a flagship gray phone. If you're looking for a value-minded OnePlus phone, look elsewhere. They have the OnePlus 9, they got the 9R, they got the Nord, they got other phones, and they're probably gonna have more coming down the pipeline. This is for someone who wants the best of the best OnePlus can offer. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, enjoying. Nick here helping you to master your technology. I will catch you all in the next episode. Be sure to be well, and let me know if you're picking up the OnePlus 9 series down below. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.